Alright, welcome back. So since we've now looked at inverse trig functions, and we figured out how to take the derivatives of inverses, we're going to take the derivatives of inverse trig functions. So suppose what we wanted to do is compute the derivative of arc sine of x. And you could recognize that we're trying to take the derivative of an inverse, which uses the inverse derivative rule. So if we let f of x be sine x, and f inverse be sine inverse, well, the derivative of sine is cosine, and so if we just plug the components in, we get cosine of sine inverse of x. So the derivative of sine inverse is just 1 over cosine of sine inverse of x, which is absolutely meaningless. This is a terrible terrible derivative. This is not what we want. It's not going to help us in any way. So what we want to do is we want to look for an expression that's equal to cosine of arc sine of x. So way back when we started trig, we learned about these triangles, right? And the triangles um, had an angle in one corner and labels all the way around. Well, arc sine of x actually gives us an angle. Remember, trig, trig functions eat angles and spit out values. So inverse trig functions eat values and spit out angles. So sine inverse is an angle, which means we can just put it down in one of the angles. And when we do that, we can remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and sine of sine inverse is x, so x is opposite over hypotenuse, and if we put x over 1, then we see that we should label the opposite x and the hypotenuse 1. If you use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the other side, we get the square root of 1 minus x squared. So after we label the triangle, we can compute all of the trig functions of applied to sine inverse of x. In particular, cosine of sine inverse of x, well, cosine is just the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. And so cosine of sine inverse of x is just the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we get the derivative of sine inverse of x, which is 1 over cosine of arc sine of x, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's take the derivative of arc cosine. We do the same thing. f of x is cosine, so f prime is negative sine, and f inverse is cosine inverse. So to take the derivative of f inverse, it's 1 over f prime of f inverse of x, which is 1 over negative sine of cosine inverse of x. So if we draw our triangle and we put cosine in the corner, arc cosine in the corner, and we label our sides, then we see that sine of arc cosine is also the square root of 1 minus x squared. Which means the derivative of arc cosine is 1 over negative 1, the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is just negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, that's kind of neat. If you look up at the two, if you look at the two blue boxes, the derivative of arc sine and the derivative of arc cosine are almost the same. The only difference is that the cosine has a negative, as as opposed to the sine, which is just one over radical one minus x squared. So here's a little handy chart. Here are all of the triangles and all of the side labelings, right? And if you look at this really quickly, here's the one that had um, sine, arc sine, and arc cosine as angles, and the corresponding sides that, that go with them. And for future reference, we have arc tangent and arc secant, and so on. So let's take the derivative of arc tangent f of x is tangent, f prime is secant squared, and so f inverse is arctangent. 
Well, it should be 1 over secant squared of arctangent of x. So there's arctangent. Here's our labelings. And secant, well, secant is just the hypotenuse over the adjacent because it's 1 over cosine, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so hypotenuse over adjacent is just radical 1 plus x squared. And so when we square secant, we square radical 1 plus x squared, which just gives us 1 plus x squared. And so that's the derivative of arctangent. So as a bonus, we'll go ahead and do a chain rule with one of our new derivatives. So let's take the derivative of arctangent of radical x. Well, you have to remember that the derivative of arctangent is just 1 over x squared. And so if we do a chain rule, the chain rule tells us that we just plug in f of x, and we have to multiply at the end by f prime of x. And so what we get is 1 over 1 plus radical x squared plus times the, uh, the derivative of the square root of x, which we probably remember by now is 1 over 2 radical x. And so what you get is 1 over 1 plus x times 1 over 2 radical x. So here's your chart that will help you remember the derivatives. Remember, arc sine and arc cosine are the same, except the co has a negative. Arc cotangent, I'm sorry, arc tangent and arc cotangent are the same, except the co has a negative. And arc secant and arc cosecant are the same, except our cosecant has the negative. So all the cos are negative. And that's really it. So practice taking some derivatives of the uh, inverse trig functions, and I'll see you next video.